baptisms here. I've got your baptisms here. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Repent, repent, repent. Baptisms here. I have your baptisms here. Good morning and welcome to Preparing for Worship for Sunday, December 5th, the second Sunday of the season of Advent. This is Advent 2C. For the first reading this week, we'll keep our Sisu reading, the reading from 2 Corinthians. Uh, but the gospel will stick with the lectionary, so these two aren't supposed to be together, but, you know, I'm all the time mixing things up. The lectionary uh, moves to Luke 3, 1 through 6 for this Sunday, and this is preparing for Sunday, the second Sunday of the season of Advent, where we make a move from the connection to last year, from the apocalyptic thing, to John the Baptist. In every year of the lectionary, no matter what year we're in, in the second and third Sundays of Advent, we get John the Baptist readings, and this is Luke's take on the John the Baptist material, which I have tried to introduce to you with the aid of my handy a megaphone, because I can sort of picture John the Baptist out in the wilderness. Uh, he didn't have a, a handy megaphone like I have, but I can kind of hear him with that booming voice and uh, sort of being like a, a, a guy who goes to fire and brimstone preaching every time, right? And uh, sort of uh, getting people uh, to gather around and hear what he has to say. Again, we're preparing for Sunday, and we can't prepare for the second Sunday of Advent without thinking about John the Baptist and who John the Baptist is and what he means for us. This section from Luke, we're in 3, 1 through 6. You know, everything prior to that is the Jesus birth story, which we're going to get actually, you know, into the actual Christmas season. We're, we're sort of going ahead in the story, but back sort of in time, uh, well, not really time, but back to, to preparing like we're the audience that needs to prepare. So, so we get uh, into this section of Luke. It's Luke 3, 1 through 20, and then we're in 1 through 6 for this Sunday. And uh, there are all sorts of angles that I could take with this. Uh, you know, anytime I do a preparing for Sunday, it could be historical. It could be geographical, it could be archaeological, uh, it could be more theological, uh, it could be devotional. You know, there's different ways to look at all these texts. Uh, in these Preparing for Sundays, I tend to look at the more uh, historical, geographical, uh, maybe a theological uh, background. This week, I'm going to save the more historical or geographical information or study more for Sunday. So if you're with us here uh, or watch this uh, recording on Sunday uh, of the sermon, you'll get more of a, of a historical or geographical uh, uh, angle of this. Uh, so in the next few minutes, I'm going to do a more sort of theological angle, what John the Baptist is trying to say theologically. Um, I'll, I'll give a little teaser before I do that. Uh, the historical information here is pretty fascinating. Luke sets the story of Jesus really well into the historical story of the world around him. He lists names, he lists uh, what's going on in the world around him. He does this like none of the other Gospels do. And uh, I'll hint at or get into this a little bit more Sunday. Um, not so much geographical, but more historical Sunday. Uh, so that leaves me here with talking to you more about the theology of uh, what, this, what this part of the text is about. And again, this is Luke chapter 3, 
and what we get is John the Baptist, and John the Baptist is, get your baptisms here, baptisms for the repentance of sins here, prepare the way of the Lord here, gather round, gather round, make his path straight, repent, oh you brood of vipers, repent, repent, get your baptisms here. And that's a little bit more of the sort of theological entry point into this story. Um, the, the big word for me here is the word repentance, the word repent, which I think is societally at this point, culturally, a hard word to hear. I think it's a word that personally we beat ourselves up over, like we feel guilt, or we say we should have done that better, or we, so, we should have worked harder, or we should have accomplished more today. I think personally we do that to ourselves, but the idea of a guy who comes with a megaphone and tells you to repent, um, uh, I don't know that we would hear that very well. Uh, this to me today makes me think of all the social media uh, that's screaming at people about how to vote or why to, to make this decision or make that decision and, and really how much of the noise we hear anyway and how bad we are sort of publicly hearing the word repent. It can be yelled through a megaphone. I still don't know that we're going to hear it or change our minds, although I think internally when all that stuff is turned off and it's just the voice inside of our heads, I think we're fully aware of the need for things to be different. I know, I think we feel guilty about things. Um, and so this is a bit of what I think is going on theologically. There's a voice that I think we still have to this day, although it's no longer really a church voice, it's much more of a sort of public voice. Hey, do better! Let people uh, get this opportunity or that opportunity. We have a lot of megaphone yelling or social media stuff uh, that's similar to me to John the Baptist. But I think at this point we've removed the idea of repentance, of spiritual, uh, the spiritual theological idea of what John the Baptist is saying from the voice that we hear. And so I want to maybe move away from the megaphone, maybe put the megaphone down, and think more on a personal level of what this word repentance means, right? I, I'll say this again because I want to make sure you're following along with me. What John the Baptist does with screaming in the wilderness, I think we hear lots of voices screaming in the wilderness, but they're not spiritual voices. They're not theological voices. They're not voices that talk to us about who God is. They're political voices. They're news. Uh, they're, uh, you know, uh, ideas of how we should live our lives, but seldom do they talk to us about who God is. On the other hand, I think most all of us have this voice inside of our head that still sort of longs for God and knows that repentance is necessary. And so this is where my life and our lives, to me, intersects with this story of Luke chapter 3. And it's what I'm thinking about theologically. And to start with, it, I don't want to yell it. I just want to sort of whisper this. Repentance. Repentance. See, I feel like you've heard the, the, the thing yelled at you about voting differently or how alarmed you should be. And I think you've heard that removed from who you are spiritually. So I want to say it's softer. And it doesn't mean that I don't think the word is important. It means that I want you to hear it differently. I don't want you to hear me as John the Baptist screaming in the wilderness. I want you to hear it maybe a little bit more as the content of what it is. Repentance. Repentance. There's a voice inside of our head that we sometimes hear that beats us up. And, and this is a bit of what John the Baptist is addressing. And I want to talk about the point, if not the mode, 
put away the megaphone and, and maybe more talk to you personally. Repentance is spoken about 14 times in the Gospel of Luke. So this is going to become a theme that throughout the rest of the year, this word is going to crop up through the lectionary in the year of Luke. It's in Luke 14 times. The first times appear here in Luke chapter 3. They appear in Luke 3.3. 3. This word repentance appears for the first time in Luke 3.3. 3. This is put into the mouth of John the Baptist. This word repentance, this story of John the Baptist, is told in Matthew and Mark as well. So this testimony of John the Baptist appearing and using this word repentance is probably true. It appears in all the Gospels. Then we get this mix of one other time in 3.8, which is not in this week's lectionary, but is in verse 8 of the word repentance again. That shows up in other places, a place called Q, an ancient sort of not, not in the Bible, but, but sort of concurrent or run side parallel to the Bible, a source called the Quell, Quelli, uh, Q, uh, and Matthew and Mark. We get two more of those. So we get it in 3.3, three, 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 eight, and then two more times where it's concurrent. So four total where all the Gospels or all the ancient sources have it. And then we get ten times in the coming year where Luke uses this word where it's just Luke using it. So Luke has some dependence on this word repentance. And for Luke, it is a reversal. It is a putting down, in a way, of the megaphone, and it's a reversal. And it's maybe putting that away and speaking more directly. Um, it's a reversal. Uh, Luke is going to talk about it next week, about rich and poor. For Luke, uh, class and poverty. Uh, taking care of people in need is a big deal. We are going to hear that a lot. A lot of the sermons this year will be about that because we're in Luke. The reversal is uh, a reversal maybe away from uh, the way we currently hear things. Maybe it's a reversal away from uh, all the noise and it's a, a setting into a different place. Uh, the idea here uh, the Greek words here are based in uh, the mind and a changing of one's mind, a reversal of one's mind. And this strikes us at the season of Advent, and I don't want to yell this through a megaphone, at a really important time in our lives. Because I think, although reversals and the changing of our mind is a part of life, I think it's a part of our lives together right now. The noise is so loud, the cacophony of uh, sort of disagreements and social media blaring and megaphone blasting uh, is a lot. Uh, to mask, to not mask, should you be getting shot, should you not. The noise of all this is so overwhelming. The news is blaring, you know, different, different variants and and we're just getting all that. And maybe the repentance here this year, the reversal, the changing of our minds, has to do with living in a different way. Maybe it's putting aside the megaphone and it's being something else. It's not a megaphone. And what it really is here, to, to approach that word repentance and what it means, is almost like a throwing up of our hands and a saying, I can't. I just can't do this anymore. I can't deal with the noise. I can't figure out what to do with myself. I can't. And see, I'm not saying this through the megaphone. I'm saying this to you personally. We can't. And, you know, we know where in our lives we've reached that point, And we know where that voice has been on us about, hey, you're just not doing it well enough. I can't, we can't, um, and it's a putting aside maybe of, of uh, all the noise 
And it's also now in the season of Advent, a season of repentance, where we move from I can't to the question, well then who can? If we can't, if I can't, then who? Well, John the Baptist grounds that in God is who. If not me, if not you, if not in all the noise, God is who. And John connects this repentance, this throwing up of our hands, the place where our mind is originally, I can't, I can't, to the voice that also says that we are forgiven of our sins. The idea of a baptism is going into the water one way, we'll say dirty, coming out of the water another way, cleansed, made whole by God. And where that sits in our world right now is, I think, just taking a different trajectory than the one we keep trying to take. You know, we keep clicking on the news, we keep trying to take up our own megaphone and blasting it right into the voice of the people who are black. Maybe there's a different way. Because we can't, and if we can't, then who? And so at the core of this is a reminder, a theological reminder, um, that the voice comes in the wilderness, uh, it comes from outside of us, and it tells us that it's time to change our minds, change our methods, and this is what the season of Advent is about. Christ will reappear in our lives, that's the promise of the Gospel, but Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God wants to say that God does the work of it and we can't and it is a cleansing, a moving to a different trajectory. And so that's what the season of Advent is, a giving up on uh, what we've been trying to blare and much more a sort of whisper between you and I, a different thing, all right? So during this season of Advent, you and I are thinking of um, this idea of sisu, of grit, of perseverance. And one of the ways that I've been thinking about that is, is that people who have sisu don't take up the megaphone. They don't say, I have sisu into the megaphone. Look at me, look at me. No, I think they fit differently. Uh, this sort of old quote that I've always loved, I think it's attributed to St. Francis. Um, the quote is, preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. That instead of blaring into the world uh, another voice of what everybody else has to do and, and all that, you know, megaphone stuff, instead we are the people who say we can't, we're repentant, and we're the people who believe only God can. And then our lives take a shape from this. Our lives take a form through the Holy Spirit that is the thing that God can use as opposed to the megaphone. It's just a whisper. It's just our self. It's just our sisu that God takes up and makes a different new voice, a, a voice of repentance, a voice that's been forgiven, a voice that says, uh, let's try a different thing. So the words that John, that Luke uses that, that are into the mouth of John the Baptist here are from Isaiah. Luke makes that a longer quote than any of the other Gospels. John the Baptist quotes Isaiah in Matthew and Mark, but Luke extends upon it, and it's all about reversal. And that reversal is where I'm trying to ground this preparing for Sunday. For us to come before the gospel this week is to hear that word repentance, reversal, changing of mind. And I think the way that we prepare for Sunday is we be prayerful. We, we say, Lord, our megaphone isn't working. We hear that you're calling for repentance. We ask instead that you would make us a people of Sisu. 
that you would take our lives and make us something different and that you would help us be a part of a reversal, a renewal, a new thing for your, um, uh, your world around us. This, for us to prepare for this upcoming Sunday and to sit before the text and before communion together, is a call to stop looking towards what's loudest or what's phrased in the funniest way or whatever we think is the coolest social media viral thing of the day, but to start looking instead to what's spiritual, what's significant, what's ceasing. We believe in the season of Advent that we have entered a time where Christ is promising a reappearance. And instead of the megaphone blasting and all of the loud stuff, the repentance, I think, for where we are and for where this text strikes us is a breath. It's no more megaphone shouting. It might even be a whispering. It might be noiseless. It might not be a sound at all. It might be preach the gospel and, if necessary, use words. I think God has made you a people who, through repentance, coupled with forgiveness of sins, are the people of rever reversal, of a reappearance, of a resurrection, of a new thing. And I think that's summed up well in the sort of humility, the unkept appearance of John the Baptist, the idea of reversal, the idea of our sisu. And so this is what I'm thinking about uh, for this upcoming Sunday. There are some historical things here. Luke likes to ground his story in some historical things that none of the other Gospels do. I'm going to talk about that angle a little bit more on Sunday. Not real in depth, but a little bit more to give you a little foretaste of that. Uh, he puts it in the year of Tiberius and in the year of other rulers, and we can pinpoint fairly well, not exactly, but decently, when that is. And that is a unique thing that Luke does. He sets it in a time and space. You and I live in a time and space, right? But then here comes John the Baptist, who has his own little minor little character role, and the time and the space that he breaks into is to tell a different story, a story of reversal, reappearance, renewal. I am so ready for that. And I think we all are. And so to me, what this preparing for Sunday is about, and what I've talked about is a little bit more the theology of it, is repentance. Luke is all about our repentance so that we may be renewed, so that we may die, so that we may drown in the waters of our baptism and resurrect back out of them. And maybe that means a different kind of presence. A different kind of behavior. It, maybe it means no more megaphone. Maybe instead it means sisu. Maybe this Sunday is all about preaching the gospel and, if necessary, using words. The world needs a different path. I don't know if everybody's going to hear that if we yell it. Maybe instead of yelling it, we just put one foot in front of the other start taking it and remain friends with all these other folks and invite them to take this other path along with us. People of God, the way we prepare for this Sunday is to be prayerful. We think about repentance, reversal, uh, what it means to repent and hear that we're forgiven and grounded in Christ. And I think it means uh, that we think instead of the megaphone of who we are and how we live with Sisu. All right, so that should get you ready for Luke chapter 3, 1 through 6. I appreciate you joining me. I will see you all Sunday. Stay safe. See you soon.